Hi, in this video, I will give an update on implementation of an instruction cache on my tiny RISC-V system, and also provide a short graphics demo at the end of this video. This is where I left off from my last project update. I added a few components to my system so it could boot from SD card onto SDRAM. The SDRAM I added is a 32 megabyte by 8 SDRAM. The capacity is much more than what I had before, which was only 16 kilobytes. However, the access of the SDRAM is pretty slow. A read access can take up to 7 to 8 cycles. In this project update, I will add an 8 kilobytes of instruction cache and see how much it could improve the performance. In my other project update, I had used dry stone as a relative measure for performance. But in this video, I'd like to do something different. Instead, I will implement a short and simple 3D graphics as a benchmark. The graphics I have in this system is what I borrowed from a prior project. The resolution is only 320 by 200, an old PC CGA graphics. I also removed the SRAM from my system, which I will explain later. So this is a typical simple two-way set associative cache memory structure. The total cache size I have is only 8 kilobytes. I have four different memory macros in the functional block. A valid bit SRAM, a tag SRAM, a cache data SRAM, and also an SRAM macro for rused bit. Rused bit SRAM is what I use to record the latest accessed way in case I need to do a cache eviction. In addition to implementing a cache memory, I also use the cache data memory macro as a scratch SRAM. The 8 kilobytes cache data memory is just mapped to regular 8 kilobytes memory space when used as scratch SRAM during boot process. I'm doing this partly because I'm running low on on-chip memory so I can save some memory resource this way. Supposedly, this data memory access will be slower as I have more logic in all its control and data path. But in the actual run, it works fine, still with 40 MHz processor clock, so I just keep it this way for now. In terms of cache access, I used this slide from my previous update for dry stone run. As the on-chip memory access takes at least two cycles, I can either make the cache access three cycles or two cycles, with data read and tag compare in the same cycle. Merging data read and tag compare is slower, but it also works fine with 40 MHz processor clock, so I will use two cycles for cache access. So the best case, when I have a cache hit, it will just be like I'm reading from a regular on-chip memory with two cycle latency. For the graphics, I reused a video module from a prior project. It is a 320 by 200 CGA resolution. Underneath, I actually implemented a 640 by 480 VGA scan signals. The drawable graphics area is 640 by 400, and I fill the bottom 80 scan lines with just blue color. They are not used to represent any data. For this demo, I will draw a simple rotating cube. To do that, I will need to use rotation and 3D to 2D projection. For rotation, it's pretty straightforward from this slide. I use integer arithmetic, so it's easier for me to debug. For 3D to 2D projection, I used a slightly different approach. Instead of starting with a viewing angle, etc., I would specify what's the ratio of near and far points of the cube from the projection plane for a certain visual effect, as in this diagram. After a few tries, I settle for the transformation here. Here's a snapshot of the rotation and projection code. It is a straightforward C implementation of the previous two slides. There's one additional transformation needed as I need to move the origin from the upper left corner of the screen to the center of the display. This is the flow of the actual drawing of the graphics. There is a 20 millisecond pause between every two frames, so the display wouldn't flicker as much. Well, sort of. 
There could be other ways still to improve the flicker, but I just picked the easier implementation. Now, here's the video demo. I still have the system boot from SD card onto SD RAM. A couple of sanity checks, then the rotating cube. The two digit number on the upper left corner is the calculated frames per second. This is the video frame rate when the instruction cache is off. It's about 29 to 30 frames per second. The screen looks broken partly because the video and the screen capture device are out of sync. Now we switch to this video that just show the same rotating cube with 80 millisecond pause in between two frames. The screen doesn't flicker as much, but you will still need some imagination to see a rotating cube. And now we're back to 20 milliseconds pause in between frames, and with the instruction cache on. We get about 43 frames per second now. Now we get two frames per second numbers with the instruction cache off and on. They are 30 frames per second and 43 frames per second. Before we just compare these two numbers, remember that we have this flow of drawing the cube. There is a 20 millisecond pause when frames per second numbers are evaluated, so we need to subtract that. Now we get the approximate runtime for each video frame. And for this trial run, it's about 4x runtime improvement with this 8 kilobytes of instruction cache implemented. Of course, this is just one case, and the difference and potential improvement can depend on a lot of things. But I think the result I have serves the purpose of this experiment, and I'm happy with it. Now I will think about what I want to do next with this project. Until then, thanks for watching.